Hi class, I wanted to cover another topic in analytic function theory. Remember that analytic functions are functions of x and y which depend only on the combination x plus i, y. They depend only on the complex variable z. Suppose we had an arbitrary complex valued function, capital F, which depends on the two coordinates x and y, the two real parameters x and y, but it's an arbitrary function. We can compute the variation of f, that is how much f changes when we change x and y, in terms of the partial derivatives df dx and df dy. For small delta x and delta y, the change in f is just df dx times delta x plus df dy times delta y, where df dx and df dy are the ordinary partial derivatives, that is df dx is the change in f uh, while we vary x holding y fixed, and df dy is the change in f with, as we vary y holding x fixed. Now, we define the combination x plus i y as the complex variable z. Therefore, delta z, the change in z, is the combination of delta x and delta y, delta x plus i delta y. Similarly, the change in the complex conjugate z bar is the combination delta x minus i delta y. Using these expressions, we can rewrite delta x as delta z plus delta z bar over 2, and delta y as delta z minus delta z bar over 2i. Plugging these expressions back into our variation of f, we see we can rewrite the variation of f in terms of a variation of delta z and delta z bar, where the coefficient of delta z we define as a partial derivative of f with respect to z. It's 1 half df dx plus 1 over 2i df dy. Remember, z is a combination of x and y, a particular combination, x plus i, y. So the variation of f with respect to z corresponds to the variation of varying delta x and delta y in that way. Similarly, the partial derivative of f with respect to z bar is 1 half df dx minus 1 over 2i df dy. It's the coefficient in the variation of delta z bar. This is a convention, but it's a very useful convention. It's a way that we can uh, talk about how much an arbitrary complex function f varies with respect to z and z bar. It's important to note that df dz, the complex conjugate of df dz, is df star dz bar. It's not the same as df dz bar. In general, f and f star are not the same, and therefore the complex conjugate of df dz is different than the der partial derivative of f with respect to z bar. They are independent and unrelated quantities. Suppose we decompose capital F as a real part and an imaginary part. So capital F as a function of x and y is a real part u of x and y plus i of v of x and y. Suppose we look at the partial derivative of f with respect to z bar. Using the expressions on the previous slide, we can rewrite it this way. 1 half of ux plus i v vx minus 1 over 2i uy plus i vy. If we uh, combine the real parts and the imaginary parts, the real parts 1 half ux minus vy, and the imaginary part is i over 2 vx plus, UY, vx plus uy. If we require that this function, capital F, not depend on z bar, that is an analytic function, it depends only on the combination x plus iy, and in no way on the combination x minus iy, then that means the real part of this expression and the imaginary part of this expression have to vanish. That is, ux is equal to vy, and uy is equal to minus vx. Again, we would rederive the Cauchy-Riemann relations. And so the Cauchy-Riemann relations are nothing other than the statement that we've, uh, we've given it, that is the statement that the function is analytic. It depends only on the combination x plus i, y. You can actually use these expressions to compute df dz as well in terms of u sub x and v sub x, u sub y and v sub y. This is something you should try and make sure you understand how it relates to the discussion we had in class. Finally, we can use these expressions to understand the relationship between analytic functions and Laplace's equation in two dimensions even more uh, transparently. If we rewrite our expression df dz, it's 1 half df dx plus 1 over 2i df dy. df dz bar is 1 half df dx minus 1 over 2i df dy. So if we compute the second derivative, d squared f with respect to z, dz dz bar, using these expressions, we see that we get a quarter of d squared f dx squared plus d squared f dy squared. The cross terms, this one, these two, and these two, when you add them together, cancel out. That is, d squared f dz dz bar 
is just a quarter of the Laplacian del squared of f in two dimensions. From this, we can see that del squared of f equals 0 uh, is satisfied for any function which is a combination of one function only of z and another function only of z bar. That's because when we take the second derivative, d squared f dz dz bar, the d, dz dz df dz bar piece uh, annihilates this term a, and the FD, df dz term, uh, term annihilates this term b. So any combination of a function only of z and a function only of z bar would actually solve Laplace's equation in two dimensions. If we take the real and the imaginary parts, we just get the relationship that we've already uh, derived before. The real and the imaginary parts of the function satisfy del squared at u equals 0 and del squared v equals 0. So analytic function theory, functions of a complex variable, are again intimately connected with the solutions of Laplace's equation in two dimensions.